The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. We think about our commander-in-chief, the president of a nation, happens to be the commander-in-chief. In our case, it's the president of the United States. He's our commander-in-chief. Not only is the president the leading officer, he's not a king, he's not a majesty, and sometimes they think they can just break whatever laws they want to break with no consequences. That's not the way it is. We have checks and balances, legislative and judicial departments. And they're there, the branches of the government, to help balance everything out. And so that means that one person doesn't have a monarchy, one person doesn't have power over the whole thing. But our leading officer, Mr. President, is known as our Commander-in-Chief. Well, I want to talk to you about our Commander-in-Chief, who is not the President of a nation. Our Commander-in-Chief is God Almighty. We need to allow Him to be our leader, our Commander-in-Chief. I'm glad that we have a Commander-in-Chief in the land when we need it, but I'm glad that we have a greater Commander-in-Chief. The armies of heaven is our Commander-in-Chief. Let God fight your battles. If you have a battle, if you have a situation, if you have a misunderstanding, if you have something you don't know what to do, the best thing in the world you can do is to allow God to fight your battles. If you allow God to fight your battles, you're going to win every time. And sometimes we may lose a battle now and then, the little boy used to sing, but we've already won the war. And I'm glad that God has planned that we can be successful, that we can win battles in life. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. There was a situation that was facing Israel, and we can read about it in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. If God is going to be our commander-in-chief, we have to be available, faithful, and spiritual. This situation finds Israel with their backs against the wall, and primarily Judah, the southern kingdom, Judah and Jerusalem, they were surrounded by the enemy. They were overcome by the enemy from three ways. Moab, Ammon, and the children of Mount Seir, which is Edom. The enemy was all against them. They were at odds. They definitely didn't have a chance against all these three sectors of the enemy. So here they are. Second Chronicles 20, verses 12 to 15. In verses 17 to 22, O our God, says the king, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee, looking to God for help. O that our nation today could look for God and would look to God for help. Instead of trusting in our own might, trusting in our own knowledge and understanding, trusting in our own ways that we would look to God is the only way that we're going to have the help that we need. We must look to Him. We must depend on God. We cannot depend on our military might. We cannot depend on our smarts. We cannot depend on our education. We certainly cannot depend on our laws. We certainly cannot depend on our government. We have to depend on God. And here was a king. His name was Jehoshaphat. There has to be a God of Jehoshaphat because the devil couldn't think of a name like that. You know that? Here's King Jehoshaphat. He's at the head of the nation. He's the king. But he's depending on God. Just because you're king, that doesn't mean that you're able to do what you need to do sometimes. Some people think that I've got this office. I'm Mr. President. I'm Mr. Cabinet Head. I'm Mr. Governor. I'm Mr. Head of State. they got all these offices and all these titles. That doesn't make you anything. All of us are men and women. Without God, we don't even have a breath. Without God, we don't have the next moment. Without God, we don't have food on our table. We don't have bread. We don't have water. We don't have air. We don't have anything without God. And we need God. All of us need God. The sinner man needs God. The Christian man needs God. The gambling man needs God. Not to gamble more, but he needs God to help him where he wants. The drinking man needs God. We all need God. 
And the king here says, our eyes are upon you. We don't know what to do, Lord. We're not depending on our own selves. We don't make believe and say, oh, everything's going to be all right. We're depending on you. We don't know what to do. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. And you can see them. They're all there. Most of the time when you have a situation like this, you leave the children and women at home. You have the men. They go out and they do what they can do. But here, everybody's together. We're going to fall. We're going to fall together. We're going to fight. We're going to fight together. We're going to win. We're going to win together. We're going to die. We're going to die together. All their little ones. All their wives. And this situation gives us a humility. You see little Judah. They're there before God. They're just waiting on God. There's nothing else they can do. Why be a pretense? Why act like you're big? There's nothing else you can do. They had no might in themselves. They were just standing before God. Their little ones there, their children, their wives. Then upon Jehaziel, his name means seeing God. Oh, we would have people today that could see God. They had a vision of God. Nobody can see Him with their physical eyes. But we need to see Him in our heart. We need to see Him in His Word. We need to see Him by faith. Jehaziel, seeing God. He's a Levite of the sons of Asaph. Came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. This is not a preacher. This is not a priest. He's not a big somebody. He's a Levite. He's a servant of God. He's just somebody standing in the midst of the congregation. God didn't put His Spirit upon the king, even though He had His Spirit with the king. He didn't put His Spirit upon one of the king's big officers. His Spirit came upon this regular God, just like you and I, and the Spirit came upon Him in the midst of the congregation. Why? Because He was available. If we are available to God, God will use us in winning the fight. He will use us in spreading the gospel. He will use us in doing the things that He wants done. He will use us to help somebody. He will use us to bless somebody. We barricade ourselves in our house. If we just clam up and shut down and allow depression and oppression to overtake us, we're not going to be available to God. But this man was available to God. If we will open ourselves to God and make ourselves available to God, we don't want to be like Granny on the Beverly Hill Billies. Jed said, Granny, what's wrong with you? Don't you have the Christmas spirit by now? She said, well, I'm just sitting here waiting on it to hit me. That's the way some people feel about God. They're just sitting there waiting on Him to hit us. God's not going to hit you. He don't want to hit you. He wants to hug you. He wants to love you. And that's the way it is. This Jehaziel was just there in the midst of the congregation with everybody else. He didn't know God was going to use him to speak to the nation. But he was available. He just made himself available to God. And he said, Hearken. Ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. He speaks to all of them. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Now that's some good news. Don't be afraid. Oh, that's exactly what we need to hear. And Jesus tells us that. God tells us that. The Holy Spirit tells us that. The Word of God tells us that. Over and over and over, God tells us, Be not afraid. Do not fear. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will hold thee with my righteous right hand. And He tells us, Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Jehaziel says, because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. We try to fight the battle and make it our battle. Make it our situation. Make it our cross to bear. And yes, we do have a cross to bear. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. We all have a cross to bear. But it's not our cross. We are bearing His cross after Him. Jesus said, If any man come after me, let him pick up his cross, take up his cross, and follow me. It's not that the battle is ours. The battle is not yours, he says, but God's. And if he is to be our commander-in-chief, we have to let him, allow him, fight our battles. And if we're going to let him fight our battles, that means that we have to let him in on the plan. And we have to take his plan. We have to ask him for counsel. Lord, what would you have me to do about this situation? And don't ever think anything is too small for God. 
There are some things that God will give us reason enough to do. He gives us common sense enough to do. We have to buy plastic forks and spoons and knives. We go out to Walmart and God says, just take your pick. Whatever you think is the best deal, go ahead and get it. But you're still asking God, what would you have me to do when you have to wash your clothes? You come up here to the washroom. Lord, what would you have me to do when you have to go to the doctor? Someone has to take you somewhere. You say, Lord, what would you have me to do? Many times, we have to be taken places and we can't drive ourselves. And we pray for the person driving. Lord, help that person. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let him keep us safe. Keep him safe. Keep us safe. Keep the angels safe. Keep everybody safe. Lord, just help him. Help her. Whoever it is. And so we commit every situation to God. The battle is not ours, but it's God's. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. That's some more good news. We think we have to do all the fighting. Sometimes we have to do something. We have people in this county that realize they need to do something. They don't hit a lick at a snake. They don't even hardly use the energy to pick up the cup and put it in their mouth. Almost have somebody to have to do all that for them. So one day they'd even be able to wipe themselves when they go to the bathroom. Lord have mercy. I mean, they're lazier than a junkyard dog. So we need to do something. He says, don't worry about fighting. You don't need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. There are three S's. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. You don't have to worry about fighting. You don't have to worry about ranking up. You don't have to worry about any of that. All you got to do is these three things. Set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. That's what he told Moses. Moses, here comes the Egyptians. They're going to swallow us up. The Red Sea is before us. Pharaoh's army is behind us. What in the world are we going to do? And Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. And that's the same thing that the Spirit of God through this Jehaziel tells the king and all the people. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. He tells them again. God has to tell us, don't be afraid. He has to tell us two or three reasons. One is because we're seniors and get a little old, can't remember like we should. God has to tell us, don't be afraid. Another reason He has to tell us is because it's just human nature to fear, isn't it? Human nature to have fear to be timid to be afraid god tells us over and over he doesn't mind don't be afraid don't be dismayed tomorrow go out against them for the lord will be with you and jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all judah and the inhabitants of jerusalem fell before the lord worshiping the lord they had just got the best news in their life god was going to be with them the enemy would be defeated and they wouldn't have to do anything but just be faithful to god that's a wonderful thing. Sometimes the burden gets heavy. Sometimes the road gets long and rough. Sometimes the way gets steep. But we need to trust in God. Not only being available, but to be faithful. To be faithful. That God can count on us. That when He needs something done, He don't have to come look at us. We're already available. And we're already faithful. And God tells the people here, just be faithful. Just be faithful to me and I'll take care of the results. And the Levites, they stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And that's what we need to do, to praise God. You may not be comfortable worshiping much out loud, but maybe we need to kind of get a little used to it. Because when we go to heaven, we get to heaven, that's what we're going to be doing. We'll praise God forever and ever. And while the ages roll, I'll keep on praising Him and my voice will never tire or grow old in a land where we'll never grow old. That's where we'll be, and that's where we're going. And God, in the meantime, is fighting our battles for us. The Levites lifted up their voice, and they praised God. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe His prophets. So shall you prosper. If you would check that verse, Second Chronicles twenty twenty, 
You want to have 20-20 vision? You're getting old, your eyes are getting dim. You have to have them big glasses and that big magnifier. You want to have 20-20 vision again? This is how you do it. You believe in the Lord. He may not give you 20-20 physical vision. I don't have that either yet. But we're believing God for the 20-20 spiritual vision. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe His prophets. Believe what the Holy Ghost says. Believe what the Word of God says. So shall you prosper. You want to prosper? You believe God's Word. Take Him at His Word. And allow His Word to be a part of your life. Don't get up every day. Just go about your routine. Grab that paper, that cup of coffee. Get out there to Bojangles or get out there to McDonald's or get out there wherever you eat that biscuit at. That's good that you do all that. But let God's Word be a part of your day. You say, I can't see good anymore. If you can see enough to read the newspaper, that old fine print, surely you can read the Bible. And they got ways that you can hear the Bible. If you can't read the Bible, you can let the Bible read to you. They have Bibles now that speak. The Bibles that talk. There are computer Bibles if you can use the computer. There are the app Bibles on the phone apps. If you can use the phone, you can use the computer, the Bible, on the telephone. And they have apps on the phone that have the Bible there. They're provided. And it'll talk to you. And you can look up verses. And there are ways that you can hear the Bible now that you never could before. But we have it now. God's Word's available to us. And we have to be faithful as well as being available. And we have to be spiritual. God wants us to be spiritual people. When we are saved, we're born again. He sanctifies our heart. He fills us with the Spirit. We are spiritual people. We're not just natural people living in a natural world, and that we are, but we're spiritual people. We're going to a heavenly kingdom. We're going to a heavenly place, and we're spiritual people. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Notice that he put those singers before the army. That's an odd thing. Looks like to me he'd have the army going first to protect them, and then he'd have the singers coming after. But you don't have to worry about that. God has already said, I'm going to fight for you. And he puts the singers in front and lets the singers go out before the army because the power of God is greater than man's power. The army represents man's power. They were just there to look good. Maybe in case somebody tried to break through, they could do a little something. But God said, you don't have to fight. You don't have to worry about that. I'm going to take care of things for you. He put singers out there that should praise the Lord and should say, praise the Lord. The beauty of holiness would be praised. They would say, as they went out before the army, to say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, for His mercy endures forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. It says the Lord set ambushments against them. Where do you think those ambushments came from? Judah didn't fight. He says you don't have to fight. Judah and the of Jerusalem, you don't have to worry about this battle. I'll take care of it. So where did those ambushments came from? They had to be angels, the heavenly host. God set ambushments against the enemy, and they were totally defeated. When God is our commander-in-chief, not only does he have a battle plan, but when God is our commander-in-chief, he has angels there that will take care of us. Just like Elisha the prophet. They got up one morning and the enemy was surrounding all around the city. They were sending down to fetch him. They were going to take him and do him in. Well, his servant got upset. Master, what in the world are we going to do? They're coming to get us. And the prophet of God said, they're more with us than they are with them. And he asked God to open the eyes of the man. And God opened the young man's eyes and he saw all throughout the mountains horses and chariots of fire all around the man of God. And they're the same way it is right now this evening as it was then. It might look like dimness, hopelessness. It might look like chaos in our nation. It might look like everybody's done lost whatever half sense they had. They don't know what in the world they're doing. They don't know which end is up. But they're still more with us than they are with them. Because with them is an arm of flesh. And with us is the Lord our God. He is our commander in chief. And he will fight our battles for us. 
Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you that we have a word of encouragement to allow you to be our commander in chief, to allow you to lead us and guide us to take care of our every situation, our families, our homes, our churches, to take care of us, and our world becomes more dark, more against God, and turning away from you in the things of God. Help us to stand true. Help us to stand strong. Because the enemy is against us. They're coming in in three ways. They're coming in in a multitude. But you are still on our side. And if God be for us, who can be against us? They're still more with us than they are with them. Because with us is the Lord our God. Thank you, Lord, that you are our commander in chief. You're our leader. You're our king. You're our captain. You're still Jehovah Nisi, the one who guides us and helps us. You're still our shepherd. And you're still our rock. You're still the one in whom we trust. And I pray, Lord, today that many would come to you for salvation and be born again and receive Jesus and let you be their leader and commander-in-chief. In In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 